Let's learn how to connect to a MySQL database using a Discord bot written in Go. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I am a full stack software developer and content creator here on YouTube. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. In the previous video in this Discord bot series, we expanded our bot so this way we can ask the user a series of questions and then take the responses in and format them in a special way so they can be dropped back in the original Discord server. In this video, we're going to expand on that exact same concept and take the information that our user sends us and store it in a MySQL database that's hosted in PlanetScale. We're going to start in PlanetScale where I'm going to show you how to create the table using the built-in console and generate a connection string. Then we're going to head to the code. We're going to expand upon our code a little bit to take the information that our user sends us write it to the database and then create a one last subcommand that's going to allow you our users in order to query information from the database the response is based on the record id that was created inside the planet scale database if you like this kind of content whether it's about full stack software development i do devops stuff i do serverless stuff i do all sorts of stuff uh subscribe to my channel like the video share it with your friends and with that let's jump into it all right, so as mentioned earlier, we're going to be using a planet scale database that's going to store information that the user gives us after we've prompted them for some of that information, the favorite food and favorite game. Um, so I'm logged into planet scale and I have a database already created, but it's, it's pretty much empty. I have one test table in here, but it's it's irrelevant for this project. So uh, let's go ahead and create a table to store our messages um, or I guess the answers for the user. So head up to console and then connect to the main branch. I don't have any other branches created here, so I'll just connect to main. And then we're going to create a table to start off with. So I'm going to type in the console create table. We're going to name this table discord underscore messages. And there's a couple things we want to store here. The first one is just kind of a unique ID for the answers or the I guess the responses themselves. Um, we're going to we're going to set this to type int. It's going to be primary key and we're going to auto increment the value. So we don't have to actually feed this a specific ID for the responses. It's going to handle it automatically for us. Next, instead of storing the the actual uh, line by line responses, what I'm actually going to do is use JSON column to just store a JSON dump of the messages. It gives us a little flexibility to extend it going forward. So we're going to name this column payload. JSON is going to be the type and not null because we don't want this thing to ever be null. You should always have some answers. And then finally, I'm going to do user underscore ID. That's going to be a big int because it's larger than just a standard integer. Uh, the user IDs inside of Discord are bigger than regular integers. So do we have to use big int here? And that's also going to be not null. And we're not going to use this column necessarily in the example, but what it could be useful for later down the road, if you want to expand on this, is finding all the answers for a specific user. So I'll add to her a close parens and a semicolon and hit enter. So there is our table it says it was completed. And then we're going to describe discord underscore messages just to see what that table looks like. And there are the three columns we just created. Now, before we move on, we also need to generate a connection string for our application. So I can do that by going to the overview tab again and clicking this connect button in the upper right hand corner. If you see the stars here, that means a password already exists and was created since you can only see the username and password and connection string uh, the first time that you create it within planet scale. It's just the best practice. So I'm going to go ahead and click new password to get myself a new set of credentials. And then as you can see, there is a DSN entry here where we're going to put inside of our environment variable, and that's going to contain the actual connection string that's going to be used to connect to planet scale. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this off and then let's head over to the discord bot and start writing some code. All right, so I'm back in the bot code and to prevent leaking any further secrets throughout the series, I went ahead and pasted that DSN value in the environment, the .env file already. Um, I just copied and pasted it directly as is, so I didn't change anything. Um, just wanted to go ahead and say that is the first step, but I'm not going to be showing that on screen again, just because it's it's not good practice to show those things on a YouTube video. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we actually need to install the MySQL driver in order to connect to the Planet Scale database. So I'm going to open up a terminal and then we're going to type in go get you and then we'll type in github.com forward slash go hyphen SQL hyphen driver and then forward slash MySQL. Okay, so that was now added and now we can start uh, writing some code inside of the main.go file. So the first thing we need to do is import the MySQL driver because if you don't do this, um, Go's not really going to know what driver you're using to connect to what database. Before we can type the actual name of the repository, you put an underscore here and that's going to prevent the Go tooling from removing the MySQL driver because you're not actually using any code directly in this file from that driver, but it's still required. So just know that you need to put an underscore there github.com forward slash go SQL driver forward slash driver. Save that. And then we'll scroll down into our main 
file here, the main function, I mean. All right, so let's go ahead and use the SQL.open function to connect to the database, and that's gonna return an instance of the database connection itself along with an error. So SQL.open. And then the driver is gonna be MySQL, it's gotta be a string there, and then os.getenv, and then we'll put put dsn here. That's gonna pull in our environment variable that we just put in that .env file. Let's check the error, and we'll say log.fatal, and then just pass in the error there, okay? And then we're also gonna defer db.close, which is going to stop the database connection from closing unless the main function actually exits. Uh, which is the only the only instance the main function should exit is if the application or the bot itself is killed from the terminal. All right, so let's save that. Now we have the connection to our database. Okay, if you recall from the previous video, we have this chunk of code underneath the uh, checking to see if the guild ID is an empty string. If guild ID is an empty string in the message, that means that it was a DM since it's not tied to a specific Discord server. So this is the code to handle that. So for the sake of keeping things clean, what I'm actually going to do is we're going to cut all of this out of here and we're gonna move this into its own um, message handler just to you know make things a little bit tidier. So I'm gonna name the handler user prompt response handler. And then instead of passing in just the session and the messages that we have previously, we're actually gonna pass in the DB as well because we wanna pass that connection, the, the DB database connection down into the handler so this way I can write the responses from the user to the database. So, and then we're also gonna pass in the session and then the message itself. Now I'm gonna go over to this guy here. I'm gonna type in command period. And if we get a quick fix of undeclared name, if we select this and scroll down, you could see that VS Code creates that function for us, but it will panic if it's called since it's, you know, basically we don't have anything here that we've actually done with. So as you expect, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this back in here. So this way, all of this logic should function just as it did before. But now let's expand it just a bit. So this way we can take the responses that our bot gets and write them into the database before we delete them, okay? So I'm gonna make some space after line 120 here. So this way we always wanna make sure that our favorite game is written back into the object. So this way we can, we can write it properly. So the query we wanna execute against the database is gonna be equal to insert into the name of our table, which is discord underscore messages. And then we're gonna pass in the name of the columns we wanna load. So payload and then user underscore ID. And then the values is actually gonna be two question marks, which these are gonna be the parameters we're going to populate when we execute this query. Okay, now we need to convert our answers actually into a string. Okay, so the way that we would do this is we need we first need to convert it into a byte array. So I'll say jbytes and error is going to be equal to json.marshall. And then we'll pass in our answers object. And what this is going to do is it's going to return a byte array along with a potential error if anything happens. As we've done before, we'll do if error, we're going to log.fatal and then pass in that error. Okay, and then we need to execute this query now. So the db.exec function is that the function you're gonna to use to execute the query and it returns two objects. It's gonna return a series of results as well as an error object for that error. And then we can call this with db.exec. The first parameter is going to be our query. And then the, any subsequent parameter is going to populate the, the, the question marks that we've essentially put inside of that query string. So the first one is gonna is gonna map into the payload column. So we're going to type in string and then pass in jbytes into the string function. This is gonna convert our byte array into a string itself. And the next thing we wanna do is pay, and then for the last parameter, we're gonna type in m.channel ID, which is not necessarily the user's ID in Discord, but it is a unique identifier from the conversations happening between our bot and the user. So it's, it's essentially close enough for us to be able to populate that value. Next, we need to want to get the the uh, ID of the column that was just created, and we can do that with the last inserted functions on the response object. So that's going to return an integer and then an error object, and we'll type in res for our responses or results dot last inserted ID. Same thing if error log dot fatal just to check to make sure we don't get any errors. And now what we can also do is we can actually write this row ID back into the Discord channel where these questions were originally asked. So let's scroll up a bit into our answers struct and let's also expand this by with record ID. And then that is going to be an N64 since that's what the record ID is that's coming back from the database. 
we're going to expand upon our to embed messages function. And I'm just going to copy and paste this down here. We're going to change this to record ID. And then the value here needs to be a string. So we need to convert that um, integer into a string or that then in 64 into a string. And we can do that with str convert uh, format int. And then we're going to pass an a.record ID. And that's going to be a base 10. So I'll save that. And then when we, we create this embed and send it back to the Discord server, we should see that record ID sitting there for us as well. So let's go back down and let's go ahead and populate that. Uh, so I will type in answers dot record answers dot record id is going to be equal to last inserted and that's been saved and let's go run main.go to test out our bot oh looks like i have an issue with something i named up here ah right here this needs to be go uh, go sql driver my sql now let's save that and try and run this one more time okay the bot is online let's head over to discord and test it out okay so i have a new channel here that we're going to use in order to um, in order to test this out. So I'm going to type in gobot prompt, since that is the name of the command that we want to use to get some prompts to our user. Hit enter. The upper left hand corner, you can see that we have some direct message from our bot. So what's the favorite food? Uh, let's go with, I don't know, what do we got? Eggs. I actually like eggs a lot. I eat eggs almost every single day. Favorite game. Uh, let's go with Sonic the Hedgehog. Another favorite of mine. Okay, we got no response, but let's head back into the Discord server and we can see we have, here's the new responses with that newly added record ID. Let's head over to PlanetScale and take a look at what that data looks like. Okay, so I'm at the console tab in PlanetScale connected to the main branch again. Let's do select star from Discord underscore messages. Hit enter. And this is basically what our pay, what our, our row looks like. So we have the row ID, we have a JSON representation of everything that was inside of that answers object. And then we also have the channel ID, which we have named as the user ID column. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do with this bot is let's go back into the code and let's expand upon it so we can actually query this information and get those answers uh, put inside of the Discord channel or the Discord server if somebody's looking for that information. Okay, so I'm in my main Go code and I'm going to scroll down a bit and we're actually going to add a new sub command here and let's name this one answers. And we'll name the function answers handler. And then it also needs to take an instance of our database since we'll be querying the database. I will use command period to get our quick fix to create the answers handler for us. So I don't have to do it manually. And let's go ahead and implement pretty much everything we've learned in the series up to this point. So uh, first thing we need to do is split the content itself to get the ID that we're gonna, the ID of the record we're gonna pass in at the same time. So I'm gonna just create a variable here named SPL for a split as a placeholder for that. We'll use the strings.split command, and that's going to take an m.content, and then we're going to split it on a space, and we're going to say if the length of the split is less than three, then we want to s.channel message send, channel message send. We'll send it back to the original channel, m.channel ID and then say an ID must be provided. And let's provide an example because that's probably a best practice. Go bot answers and then one. If I could type today, there we go. <laughs> go bot answers one. And then we're just gonna return. So basically if we don't have the right number of parameters, we're not even gonna try and handle this command. We just wanna tell the user they need to fix whatever they put in there. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to pick the ID out. So we're going to convert the uh, second, we're going to convert the third element of the split array into an integer. So I'll say ID error is going to be equal to str convert, str conv, ATOI for ASCII to integer, and then pass an SPL, and then two, which is going to be the, the third element, because, you know, arrays, slices are zero base, is going to be the third element in the array. Let's do our common error handling here, log.fatal. And then now we can start writing the code in order to execute against the database. So we need to create some placeholders for the values for all the values that we're going to get back. So I'll say var our record ID is going to be in 64. We'll say var answer string, which is going to be that JSON payload that we just saw is going to be a string. 
And then finally, var user ID is gonna be in 64. Okay, typically when you're doing querying like this, you often would, would use an object to hold all this, but we're just gonna use some raw var variables here. Uh, next, our query is gonna be uh, select star from discord messages, from discord underscore messages, where ID is gonna be equal to a question mark since that's our parameter. Now let's query a row, so we'll say row. We're only gonna query one row, so we can use, instead of the query command, we're gonna use query row, which is only gonna return the first one. We'll pass in query and pass in our ID value there. And then we're going to use the command rows.scan or row.scan in order to look at the individual values of the columns and then put those back inside of the three variables that we had created just above here. That's gonna return an error just so we have something to check. So we'll say error is equal to row.scan. And then we're gonna pass in the pointers to those specific variables that we just created. So I'll use an ampersand and record ID ampersand answer string and ampersand user ID since we're pressing a reference because we're not creating new variables we're basically just taking the the value of those specific columns in that order and placing them inside of the variables we created above again handle the error here log.fatal finally let's convert this into an object let's convert that answer string from the JSON string into the actual object itself. So let's create an empty answers object. And we're going to use the JSON on Marshall, which is going to return an error. So error equals JSON dot on Marshall. And then we're going to convert that string back to a byte slice or byte array. So you can use the open close square brackets followed by byte and then pass in our answer string. And then we also need to pass in a reference to the answers object, we, the answers variable we just created. So this way, JSON on Marshall knows where to put the values. So we'll do answers like that. Another instance of logging our, or I guess checking our error. Finally, let's go ahead and update the answers object with the actual ID that was returned. So I'll say record ID because we are saving a zero value inside of the JSON itself. So we need to manually set this record ID is going to be equal to record ID like that. Convert it to an embed is going to, we're going to say embed is equal to answers dot to embed message. Use that function that we created in the previous video. And then finally s dot channel message, send embed, I'm sorry, channel, yeah, channel message, send embed, Let's pass an m dot channel ID and pass in a pointer to our embed like so i'm gonna fix that channel id okay and this should basically let us pat let us query the information that we just stored in the database i'm going to open the console again we'll kill the bot and say go run main.go again and now let's head over to discord and test out our new function all right type in go bot answers and then pass in the one as the ID of the column we want back. And we can see we have the responses that were given back to us. Notice how these were actually pulled from the database instead of just responding back to the channel with whatever the user actually sent. And that is essentially how you can use information gathered from a user to store it in a database as well as retrieve it back into the Discord server using a Go Discord bot. After watching this video, you should have a pretty good understanding on how you can work with databases using a Discord bot and go. Uh, if you like this kind of content, once again, do me a favor, like the video and share it with your friends, hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.